Hi, and welcome to another 5-minute tip. In this tip, we're going to look at a concept that is really close to sweep or sweep NURBS. I believe they dropped the NURBS part of the object in the new versions of Cinema 4D. But it's basically that object that lets you, you know, draw sort of a spline and then take another spline, like a circle, and then you can create a sweep NURBS object you can put them both inside and it sweeps one spline around the other. Pretty basic. So it's fine if you want to use it to sweep a circle or a circular shape. But when you start to sweep shapes that have a little bit more purpose, you can run into some problems. So hopefully I'm going to show you guys a little trick, more like a feature of the sweep NURBS object that might help you out when this happens to you. Magically, I have a file prepared with a spline that I like. So for this concept, we are creating a racetrack, sort of a video game like Mario Kart. It's just the concept I have going here. And this is the shape we want our racetrack to be. But one of the major aspects of this game is that uh, banking corners are really important. Like you can slide off of the track. Let's just say that's the scenario we're working with. So I wanted to mock up some ideas for this. Remember, I'm not actually making a game. This is just an idea of how to explain the concept. So what I want to do is uh, I, I want to make a track that has banking corners and some ups and downs. And to do that, I'll take a rectangle and I'll reduce its height so that it's kind of like a slab. And then I can scale it down a little bit. And then I put these two into a sweep nerves. Pretty easy. So the spline and rectangle go into the sweep nerves. So what we have here is sort of a, uh, let's add a material to it so we can see it a little bit better. Let's change the material so it doesn't hurt our eyes so much. And I'm going to switch to a wireframe mode so we can see what's happening. So what we have right here is we have sort of a uh, rectangular shape being swept along this racetrack. Let's uh, select the spline and let's just reduce the number of intermediate points here so we can see things a little bit better. So we have this shape and as a flat track it works pretty well. That's, that's some good geometry. However, when we start to add rises and dips to our track, for instance, we may want to select this point right here and lift it up so that we have a hill to climb. You may want to lift the points on either side of it a little bit as well. Cool. We, um, we see something strange start to happen. You may not notice it immediately, but upon closer inspection, you can see that because we've lifted this part of the track, in order to keep things nice and smooth, the sweep object has kind of made it so that you're almost guaranteed to fall off at this point. There's no banking turn or, or the camber of this turn is facing the wrong direction. So how do we fix that? Well, Cinema 4D's sweeps have this really cool feature called a rail spline. Uh, normally when you're just playing around with an object in Cinema 4D and you look down here in the object settings and you say, oh, rail direction, banking, two rail, those look interesting. Unless you read the help, you're not really sure what to do with it. Some of you may have accidentally copied another spline into your object and saw things kind of get messed up or disappear. Like, what's going on here? That, that does not look right. So let's delete this spline. And for this example, what we're going to do is select the sweep nerves object. We do not want a two-rail spline um, setup. We do want to use rail direction. We do not want to use rail scale. So what we're going to do is use a rail spline, which as you might have gathered is a second spline, to control the direction of the sweep. So here's an easy way to do that. Let's go to the top view and let's copy this spline outside of the hierarchy. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to edit this spline while seeing the existing object. So once I've copied this spline outside of the hierarchy, I can just select everything and scale it up a little bit. But it doesn't 
quite fit, you know, because I didn't scale it along the normals or anything. You actually can use the create outline tool to make this a little bit easier. So in that example, what you would do is you would probably copy the spline out just like I did before, select all the points. Actually, I'm not sure it's necessary to select all, but that's a habit. And I believe it's in the right click menu, create outline. So when you click that and then you click and drag, you can actually create an outline that kind of fits the outside of the track and that's what we want. So when we release, we can see now that we have one, two splines, one that we have selected and this new one that's created. So the one we have selected, we don't need anymore. So we can just delete it. So now we have one spline that is inside of our racetrack that controls the shape and we have a second spline outside that we're going to use to control the direction. But if we try to use this, it's going to mess up. Let me show you. So things aren't that great. Initially, this confused me for such a long time. I couldn't figure out why this was happening. And then I realized it's kind of like it's twisted. It's almost like it's going the wrong way. And that's exactly what's happening. If you go to the top view and you select a spline in Cinema 4D, you can see it goes from white to blue. Uh, at least I think those are the default colors. If I select the other spline, it goes from blue to white. If you go from the same sort of counterclockwise direction. This outside spline is flipped because we use the create outline tool. To flip it the other way, we just have to select all the points. Again, I'm not sure if that step is actually necessary. And we click reverse sequence. It's going to flip the sequence of all the points. And you'll notice that it's not messed up anymore. So now that we've established that this spline on the outside is our rail spline, we're going to rename this object rail. And now that this object is renamed, that's really all there is to it. You can probably figure out the rest. This spline now controls the banking direction of the sweep, which means that in our game, if it's important to have a, uh, a banking corner right here, we can just lift those points up and the spline banks like that. We can also lower these points right here and that corner banks a little bit. And this is really cool because we still have construction history. Even though we can now use the rail spline to create banking turns, we haven't had to convert our object to polygons in order to do so. For instance, I could go back into the sweep NURB spline here and reduce the adaptive angle, take it back down to the default of five degrees. And now we have a nice smooth track that we can use. Now, here's a couple of things to remember. The rail spline controls the direction of the cross sections. Easiest way to explain that in a better way is to show you. So right here, you can see the cross sections are kind of skewing. And you can change that by moving the rail spline like this. So you probably want your rail spline to be tweaked a little bit so that the cross sections stay relatively perpendicular to the edges of your object. So you can actually go in here from the top view and tweak the actual geometry until you like the way it looks. Now we're at nine minutes already around nine minutes, I think. And we're running out of time, but I want to show you one last thing. If you wanted to do the two rail option, play with that a little bit, that's pretty interesting as well. What you can do is if you turn on rail scale, you can see that the rail now also adjusts the size of the sweep section. So depending on where you put the rail, you can actually stretch or squash the sweep. Now notice it's still sweeping along this path. And then the outside rail is determining its boundary and its banking. If you turn on two rail, it changes a little bit. It goes from the inner spline to the outer spline. So that may be more intuitive depending on your situation. But 
That's how you use a rail spline, or more than one rail spline, to control the direction, the banking, the scale of a swept object. In our example here, a really sweet looking racetrack. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tip. It's again, a little bit longer, but I'm kind of going on the idea that the five minute tip is a tip that you can grasp within five minutes. If I ramble and talk about it and give a few more examples, I think it still counts as a five minute tip. Anyway, until next time, see ya.